All right, what's happening, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Modus RX audio experience. My name is Dr. Eric Wallace, and I am physiotherapist and owner here at Modus RX Physical Therapy. Happy to come to you on this wonderful Friday. It's kind of gloomy and rainy out there, but nothing's going to damp dampen my spirits today because we have, well, since I last talked to you, the USA just dominated, dominated the Ryder Cup. The my Milwaukee Brewers are starting their playoff run today in the uh, Major League Baseball playoffs. The Milwaukee Bucks, who are still world champs, don't you forget it, kick off their uh, NBA season very soon. So in terms of sports and all that nerdy stuff that I get excited about, we are just living it up. Uh, we won't mention the Wisconsin Badgers. Uh, don't worry about them. They, they don't really matter that much anyway around here. Um, but no, uh, in all seriousness, I uh, hope everybody's doing well. A lot of fun stuff happening uh, out there in the land of sports. And uh, really, I think for a lot of you, potentially you've been uh, going through some uh, marathon seasons, I believe. Uh, all of the crazy individuals that decide to pay money and go out and run 26.2 miles, um, you know, you can just do that. You can just go out on, on a weekend if you'd like and, and run 26.2 miles. And no, I'm, I'm, again, I'm joking. Um, kudos to everybody that uh, is either at the peak of their training for, for these fall marathons or has just completed. Uh, we've had some clients here. And, and again, I, I joke about the marathons. It's an unbelievable accomplishment. I've done halves. I've never done a full. Um, I can't say if I'll get to it or not. Not sure I have that type of uh, uh, drive and discipline like some of the people that uh, that we're working with. But um, today's podcast, let's get to it here. Today's podcast is about uh, what what they don't tell you about your knees. And I love the use of they, right? They is in quotes. So they is going to be the, the so-called experts, your physicians, your orthopedics, um, some of our uh, physios and our chiros and our personal trainers. Um, what they don't tell you about your knees that, that we probably should be. Hopefully we're gaining awareness to some of this and uh, hopefully we are starting to communicate this stuff more to dispel some of these terrible, terrible myths that are out there uh, in, in regards to knees and, and knee pain. So um, that's what today is going to be about. And we really want to kind of frame it around any individuals that are uh, just finishing up, you know, or in the peak of their marathon, running training, race training. Um, if you're in the CrossFit world and you've had some of your competitions, uh, you know, take take heed of some of this advice or some of this content and really take it to heart. Um, I don't do these podcasts at random and don't have a plan for them. There is some pretty solid uh, research that's been done behind some of this stuff. And it's important that we get this out there in the community. So if you're listening, uh, first of all, make sure you check into our most recent uh, ebook, which our e-guide, our e-e um, program, whatever you want to call it these days. It's beneficial. It's for your knees. Um, Haley will have already mentioned it for you in the intro, but make sure you check that out. Um, some really actionable steps in there and what we're doing with a lot of our individuals with knee pain. And um, also... Make sure you share this out with people. We would greatly appreciate if you are listening, if you're finding any benefit, if you're finding any edutainment, if you will, from our podcasts. Uh, hopefully, again, just trying to use the audio version of all these different things that are out there nowadays to reach you and, and inform you more so that you can be an informed consumer and make informed decisions for your health. That's really what this is all about. We're hoping to have some more guests coming on um, later this year and in, in early 2022 and try to get more local individuals aboard and, and national individuals as well to talk about some of this stuff as well. So you don't just always have to listen to me blab. But let's get back to the matter at hand. Knee pain. So what they don't tell you about your knees, right? And we'll put they in quotations because everybody loves uh, saying uh, they, uh, whoever they is, but uh, it, they in this case is probably the, the people who are making some of these big decisions for you, for us, um, what they might not be telling you. And um, I'm not going to go into why or, or um, the, the ethics of it all, but this is, this is coming from my clinical experience and what people are telling me and what I'm hearing. And then I'm kind of looking at the research of it all and trying to make sure that we're all aware of what's really happening here. So what they don't tell you about your knees. Well, first of all, 
let's let's talk about um, body changes, right? The first thing that they don't tell you about your knees is that cellular change, cellular evolution, um, joint modifications, joint evolutions, joint changes, right? These things are normal. These things are normal. So if you are 25 and older and have any sort of active history and somebody goes and takes an image of your knee, it is not I'm sorry, I, I hate to tell you this, I hate to break it to you, but it is not going to look how it looked when you were 18, right? It's going to have evolved. And the analogy that I'm gonna use, because what happens with knees, and this happens, with, we've talked about this before with your spine, but what happens with knees is that we're so quick to get imaging, we're so quick to do diagnostics, we're so quick to go in with exploratory, arthroscopy and, and, and you know find what's quote unquote wrong with the knee. Um, for a large percentage of people, all of us, <laughs> so 100%, your knee is going to take on cellular evolution as you age. And that is 100% normal and 100% okay. So the analogy that I use is, do you think it's normal for our face to get wrinkles as we age? Yes or no? And if you answered no, um, I would like to know what sort of juice or Botox or whatever it is that you're that you're utilizing these days. Uh, but but it's normal, right? Cells change and evolve, and um, I'm not even going to say age because aging has this negative connotation, like it's like it's something bad. It's it's evolution of our cells. So if we don't get worried about, uh, well, some of us do, but if we don't get overly concerned about changes on our face and wrinkles on our face, and those wrinkles don't automatically cause pain, right? Now, I don't think a lot of us are walking around with, with wrinkles on my forehead and saying, oh my gosh, my forehead hurts because of those wrinkles. The same thing in a lot of cases, not all the time, there are cases, right, where we have stuff in the knee that changes because of because of trauma, because of really significant degenerative arthritis, some of these things, right? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not avoiding these things, but in a large majority of people, there's going to be cellular changes at the knee. And therefore, when we take images and we say, look, see right there, you got blah, 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 X, Y, Z. And, and this is why we need to do, you know, a meniscectomy or a surgery, or you need to start taking, um, you know, glucosamine chondroitin and all this stuff it's normal. Okay. Some, some things are, are, you know, five, 10, 20% of us max are abnormal and are actually what's causing the pain, but cellular changes in your knee are normal and they do not automatically guarantee that you have uh, pain because of them. Right. So take that advice and, and, and just take it for what it's worth. It's very important. If you're going to get your knee looked at, assessed, evaluated, treated, that somebody is looking at the whole picture, right? The whole clinical evaluation. One image of your knee should not dictate what you're gonna do next. And if, if you've been down that road, then please hop on and, and tell everybody else uh, what I'm saying as well. There are things, again, knee replacements after a certain age where the degeneration has gotten so bad, torn ACLs, these, these really traumatic things, obviously, we're going to have to take some action on potentially beyond the conservative care, but um, cellular change is normal. Wrinkles of your face, wrinkles of your bones. Um, there's not a drastic, drastic difference between the two if you stop and think about it. Number two, the, the number two thing that they don't tell you is that squatting is actually, it's not bad for your knees at all. And, and I'm going to take it one step further in, in, in that squatting below parallel actually letting your knees go ahead of your toes and, and letting your, your thigh bone drop below parallel is actually a good thing for you, right? Now, if you have acute, hot, flared up, whatever knees, then, then, then yeah, you might not want to load up the bar and go crazy with, with deep, deep squats. But in the grand scheme of things, all things being equal, squatting is good. Squatting below parallel is even better. And everybody's going to have their own individual variances on that. But we have some pretty solid research that shows joint force, uh, joint reaction force is um, actually not not increased like we thought it would the deeper we go. And if anything, it's actually good for the knee because 
we are going through a full functional range of motion at the knee under tension. So on a grand, like I said, all things considered um, sir, uh, level, squatting can be good. It can be preventative and, and it should be utilized in your strength training, wellness, proactivity plans. If I hear one person without, without an understanding of the mechanics and the benefits of squatting say, oh, well, you, sh you know, your knee pain, you shouldn't be squatting and, and, and you shouldn't have been squatting in the first place. I might uh, jump out the proverbial window, okay? So again, there's these unique situations. When I, when I do these podcasts, I'm talking by and large, all things considered, but squatting is not bad uh, and squatting below parallel is actually pretty darn good and safe for you, okay? And then lastly, lastly, for our individuals who are listening to this and are 50 and above, our active individuals that are 50 and above, Besides joint replacements, which is happening and, and happening with, with fairly good success as we live longer and um, the technologies get better, I'm not talking about total joint replacements. I'm talking about the arthroscopic men, um, meniscus, cartilage, uh, you know, some of these types of surgeries. There is no difference at a year plus between conservative care, i.e. working with somebody like us, physiotherapist, um, working with a personal trainer, working with a strength conditioning person, working with an athletic trainer, working with a chiro, there's no difference, especially you know if they know what they're doing, obviously. There's no difference at a year out from surgery between doing physical therapy and, and, and conservative care or the equivalent or having surgery. And worse yet, at multiple years out, the people that had surgery were worse off, okay? So the common question and the common thing that will come up going back to point one with the imaging is that if you're 15 above and you're having some knee issues and they go in and they find something wrong with your meniscus, your cartilage, kind of the internal guts of your knee. And again, minus the ACL or the big, you know, the, the, the ligaments, so to speak. But even in those cases, there's, there's some things to talk about. If you're having issues there, be very, very cautious about surgery uh, at that at that at that age point in that time of your life, because the the changes are are minimal, if not worse, with surgery versus conservative care, and we have research on that. So, again, I don't want to go into this white paper nerdy research type thing, but I want you to really stop and consider how many how many individuals do you know or have you you know, been told because of something internal in that knee, you know, that the meniscus is the common one, the um, cartilage kind of being worn away, and they want to go in and they want to do that, that, um, that arthroscopy, right, that, that arthroscope or that minimally invasive procedure, they want to, they want to investigate, you know, clean up something and, and then close you back up quickly. Um, very, very cautious with that, right, and, and you're going to do a lot better for yourself with, with exercise, with good you know, um, moderate exercise, well-designed, well-programmed exercise and conservative care, uh, than getting, than getting cut open. So, um, and, and I, I, again, I wouldn't say this stuff. I wouldn't bring it up, uh, if there wasn't something to kind of, to kind of back it and have us, uh, have us talk about it more, which is some of this great research that's being done. So those are the big three things that they won't tell you about your knees and, uh, make sure if you are listening to this, if you're watching this, Make sure that you leave a comment and let us know your thoughts. Maybe you disagree with something. Maybe you think I'm full of it. Maybe you completely agree and you've been down the road of, of one of these scenarios or been told some of this stuff. Um, but please uh, engage with us. Let us know what you think. If uh, you found any benefit to this or interesting, uh, any interest in this, make sure you share it out and, uh, and, and keep subscribing. Keep uh, listening to us. We're going to keep coming up with some hot takes and some edutainment here in the future. Um, like I said, check out our new e-guide. Uh, it's all about kind of the, the uh, five tools to easing your knee pain and building legs of steel. And we don't just look at the knee. We look at what happens above and below that knee, uh, which is going to be really, really important for you. So uh, that's what I got for you today. Hope everybody's doing well. Go Brew Crew. Go Bucks. Go USA. And uh, hope everybody's having a wonderful fall. And we are off and running in October here. We appreciate you. Thanks for listening. And as always, have a wonderful day.